Let me start this video off with a simple question. What mod loader do you use? Is it the old and reliable Forge, the new and somewhat improved Fabric, or did you dive deeper and are you using Quilt, the fork of Fabric? In my recent deep dive into the modded community, I've talked to a lot of big developers, like Young from Young Better Caves and others, Hiroku and his team over at Cobblemon, and Spiger from Industrial Craft 2, and they all echoed the same thing concerns about the current modding scene and the path it's going on right now. And now with Forge's possible death and Neoforge's birth, we stand at the end of an era, with so many people being confused or just shouting from the rooftop that their mod loader is better, and many developers not porting out their mods to Forge or Fabric, is modded Minecraft headed to a dead end? Or is this just a new beginning of a golden age of modding? Well, stick around as I dive into the deep end, armed with historical knowledge of a time where this happened before, and oh, before you dive with me, be sure to hit that little subscription button, as I have a lot of cool stuff coming up. But with that being said, let us ask ourselves the question, was it worth it? First, a small recap for all my friends living under a rock. A couple of years ago, many players complained about Forge's performance and lackluster updates behind the scenes. See, most players already used Optifine to at least get some of their FPS back and make the vanilla game at least somewhat playable. But with every update, performance became less and less noticeable, causing players to blame everyone under the sun. Some blame Mojang, saying that they were not doing enough to keep the game playable, which has some truth to it. Some said Optifine was just not good enough anymore, and the devs had given up on actually trying to make it better. But another group of players blamed Forge for it being bloaty, unresponsive and just a slow mess of code. People from the latter group decided to create Fabric, which was lorded as a faster and more reliable version of Forge. But there was one catch. Forge mods will not work on Fabric, as they changed a lot of the internal code behind the loader itself, which caused a lot of mod developers to face a difficult decision. Either move their mod over to Fabric, supporting both mod loaders, essentially doubling the workload until better tools were created, or simply not bother and remain on the platform they knew and trusted. A lot of the smaller devs chose the latter, and another few chose to abandon Forge entirely and develop entirely on Fabric. This caused a split in the modding community, with droves of people fighting over which loader was better, while in the backhand, modders were scrambling to decide to port over or not. But there is one big issue here. Fabric was not complete. See, some of the functions and creature comforts a lot of the devs were used to were not available in Fabric at the time, causing developers to just not see it as a viable replacement. Essentially, if you wanted to develop on Fabric and came from Forge, you had to relearn a lot of stuff and tools that you took for granted. On top of that, some things might just not work, as Spiger said in my interview with him, which you can watch after this video right here, by the way. With the birth of Fabric, the community was divided once again and turned into infighting over which mod loader was best, with the general conclusion that a lot of non-invested players took was that Fabric was good for simple mods and to gain a little bit more performance, and Forge was the go-to for big mods and mod packs. The fight continued until a new player entered the scene. Just like the Eldari birth Slanesh, I think that's a little bit too niche of a reference. This infighting and crave for more performance caused Quilt to birth itself into existence. And well, there are other allegations why they split off from Fabric, but I don't find any tangible evidence and won't cover them here. The important thing was, Quilt exists. Now the main difference here between Forge and Fabric and Quilt is that Quilt is a fork of Fabric, meaning that they derive a lot of the code from the source product. A good example of this is PaperMC, the most used server software fork of SpigotMC, where all plugins made for Spigot actually run perfectly fine on paper. So if that's the case over at the server side, it should be possible at the modding site, no? Well, yes, it's actually very possible. However, Quill decided to not allow any fabric mods to run on their loaders. It had to be specifically coded for Quill itself, which in my opinion was the wrong move to make. All right, small correction here. Um, apparently they do allow fabric mods now. Fabric and Forge are incompatible because they are completely different code bases. Sure, they are based on the same principles, but essentially they are two entirely different loaders. Quilt and Fabric are very similar, 
and to my mind, it seems like they were going out of their way to stop fabric mods from running on Quilt. I've had my in-house tech wizard, Mose, and he concluded that while Quilt adds a lot of stuff and removes a few fabric methods, the overall code structure is still very similar to fabrics. Now, I need to clarify this before I go on. I am not hammering on Quilt as a project here. I'm just asking, why do we need a third mod loader? that does not allow any mods that are not coded for them to run on it. Because with the existence of Quilt, all it did was plunge the modding community in even more chaos. I'm all for innovation in the modding space. And if the result is that we all got better performance for a game we paid good money to play with, that would be good. But sadly, all this infighting seemed to do was to cause people to comment into the comment section of mods to endlessly ask for a port to their preferred mod loader. Create a culture of hate towards anything that wasn't their preferred mod and an endless amount of work for mod developers. You'll notice that there are few big names running on Quilt because supporting it would not only increase development time and testing time, but it would also bring in an entire other loader to support for. With these three big loaders dancing around each other in a complicated dance, essentially not trying to even acknowledge each other's existence, the Minecraft community would be in for a great wake-up call when the unthinkable happened. Earlier this year, Forge, the oldest mod loader and for some the gold standard for many years and the reason this whole thing even happened in the first place just ended in a very unceremonious way. See, for many years, Lex, the person overseeing a lot of the systems for Forge, had been a thorn in many developers' side. From being an abrasive person to just being an outright ass to anyone with a question, many of the team behind Forge finally had enough and decided to leave en masse creating Neoforge, and announced in a statement in the old Discord that they actually just overtook and rebranded to Neoforge, lol, that they would break compatibility with the old Forge once update 1.21 released. In order to fix a lot of the spaghetti code behind the scenes, essentially the team had kicked out Lex and started its own mod loader, which was very exciting to see, and where a lot of people, myself included, called Forge dead and it would now seem that they are still updating to the newest version and still going on. And as of writing, Forge 1.20.4 was released 20 days ago, with the latest build for Neo Forge being 1.20 and being about 3 days ago I think, I can't really tell here, and promises a lot of changes with the next few updates. We essentially have 4 big mod loaders now, continuing this dance around each other. And with the three complete ones ignoring each other's existence and with the newcomer declaring the plan is to do the same, we now have even more mod loaders to worry about. Who knows, this might even spiral to the point where we have a mod loader for every mod out there. But why is that a bad thing? Why are people complaining? Why am I complaining? Well, it's quite simple. There is no reason to. Well, yes, competition in this space is always great to have. It's not competition in the traditional sense. These mod loaders are each doing things radically different from each other, leaving a regular player who doesn't know anything about modding to wonder which one is the best. Or the situation where a mod he really wants to use isn't on the mod loader he prefers. And according to my own audience, a majority still goes for Forge, with Fabric coming in close second. All right, during this uh editing session i noticed that fabric was overtaking forge so take that as you will it leaves me to wonder what is the point of all of this and don't come at me with this meme i've seen it in my comments a lot especially in the what if mojang made a mod loader video but that's not what i'm saying here we the players get zero benefits from these mod loaders ignoring each other's existence sometimes even deliberately. You might be wondering why I'm dunking on four mod loaders while there are about 300 server software projects out there. Well, that's because in the case of the Spigot Paper Fork line specifically, you can still use plugins you know and love in any of these. A plugin made for Spigot will run on Paper, Purper, and even smaller projects like Gale. With Paper going for performance, Purper going for customizability, and projects like Gale for optimization, the thing they share is that they are all drop-in replacements, meaning you can just drop their jar into your server and go. With mods nowadays, you need a degree in analytical analysis to even figure out if a mod will run for your loader. Or God forbid, 
Do you download your mods manually and accidentally download the wrong version, crashing your game and crashing your mood to even go on? So if the server side can do it, why can't the modding side? But with that being said, it's time I end this rant. I was Lunar, you were very awesome, and I will see you in the next one. I would like to say a special thank you to my many pebbles scrolling down the screen right now. And I would like to say a super duper special thank you to my boulders and mountain tears individually. If you would like to see all the interviews I do and listen to extra bonus content, please feel free to pledge on Patreon right now. See you later, lads.